Africa. Welcome once again to Issues and Answers. On our program today, we have Luna Williams. She's the president of the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix. Welcome, Ms. Williams. Certainly happy to have you with us today. We're going to speak on matters pertaining to your organization. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Okay, certainly welcome. First of all, tell us about your association and how long it has been in existence. You know, maybe well over 40 years. Yes, the association has been in existence for about 40 plus years, but um, I moved to St. Croix in 1990, so that's when I joined the association. From the time I've been here, we're mostly a cultural group where we take part in cultural events happening on St. Croix. We also dance quadrille, and we do take part in the culture of St. Croix. Okay, uh, what actually brings you to St. Lucia at this time? I'm here on vacation. Okay, yes. and uh, I'm sure you're taking the opportunity uh, as well to maybe s really promote the work of your association. What are you actually doing? We, like I said, we're a cultural group. We're really into the culture, but we also help in, um, like for example, we have, we have adopted the Sufre Infant School, and so we have been sending stuff for them. We raise funds and we send stuff for them. The last thing we did was we gave them a new playground at the time. We also help with, if there's a disaster in St. Lucia, we raise funds and we do send trailers and stuff like that. Okay, how, how big? in terms of numbers of uh, members that you have in your association? At present, we're about 50, but it used to be a bigger group. But um, the members are getting a little older, so it's dwindling down. Right now, I am recruiting young members because we have to carry on the work that the older members started. Well, how do you plan to, to do that recruitment? Are you using some of the older folks that you do not see around that often? What was the strategy? We are using the, the older people and when we have events like the celebration of independence, we, we also celebrate La Rose and uh, Jeune Quayol. We use that opportunity to speak to the younger generation that are on St. Croix, asking them you know, to see what we do and come in to our meetings. We have meetings every first Sunday of the month, so we invite them to the meetings and ask them to come see what we do. Well, this uh, new person that you're targeting, how much interaction or how much relation would they would have had with St. Lucia in the first place? If you're going to look to recruit them, were they in positions maybe to have visited St. Lucia sometime in the past? Or are you trying to attract them by letting them know there's an opportunity to know about St. Lucia and how you can help to actually keep the association strong and vibrant? Actually, we're targeting the St. Lucians who are on St. Croix. Most of the young people are just coming over so we let them know that there's a group that you can join, you know, and we let them know what we do. And if they're interested, like we say, you know, they, they join us. Okay, well, you mentioned the cultural aspect of it. It's one of the earliest things you mentioned when you spoke about um, some of your activities. Yes. And uh, what times of the year do you actually most prominently show what St. Lucia is over in St. Croix? And uh, how has that been received by persons who might not be of St. Lucian descent? Okay, we have three major events that we celebrate. St. Lucia's Independence Anniversary, the La Rose Festival, and also Jeune Quayol. For the independence celebrations, we usually get an ambassador or a member of parliament from St. Lucia. So we invite them to our dinner dance. We have a dinner dance and we usually invite them to be our guest speaker. This year it was Ambassador Fletcher and Minister Flood Bobre. For La Rose, we have the festival, we do our sayas. It's not like here where you know, we can 
really go out and do everything. It's different. So we use Friday nights or Saturday nights where we do our seances at a St. Lucian bar. And um, for Junique Weyol, also it's at a St. Lucia, um, he's a St. Lucian, so we use his place to do our Junique Weyol. Okay, I want to look at all of them individually and to look much more into detail as to some of the activities that you actually have on. So maybe first of all, you can start with the independence. What do you do? Do you dress in national wear? Do you teach people more about St. Lucia, this culture, this history, geography? What about independence that you, you really look to make stand out and what do you mainly do um, okay. during independence? For the independence celebrations, we usually have a week of activities where we tell the um, people about our St. Lucian culture. We portray our national wear, our cultural wear. We also have an independence mass where there's a choir. So we have that mass on the Sunday. We make the announcement that the mass is on whatever day we dress in our national wear we have a St. Lucia choir we come out every independence we sing for the mass and then after the mass we have an after mass brunch where we invite the St. Lucians and also the Crucians to join with us where we do our local foods and our dressing and also our local music. So what's been the response like over the years by the Crucians who um, come and participate with you do you find that their numbers are improving or do you find it more difficult to get more the Christians to come out and actually witness some of the St. Lucian experience during Independence Time? The numbers are increasing. Um, the month of May is usually citi Senior Citizens Month. So because of what they have seen us doing on St. Croix, they have always invited us to the, sen there's the Senior Cultural Day where they come out and they have the different islands portrayed portray the culture. So we're always the biggest group over there, apart from the Crucian cultural group. So we usually go and we portray our St. Lucian wares, our, we dress in our national way. We, we do some of our local foods where, you know, we give them a taste of the St. Lucia foods. So I'm sure it makes you happy that, especially when the, the Crucians actually re respond to that activity, how do you feel when, when, when you get them participating at that level? Proud St. Lucian. I feel really good. Okay, so you actually feel like all your efforts are worth it? Yes. And does it inspire yes. you to keep going on every year? Yes, it does. Okay, yes. we're coming up first, close to our first break on the program, but we'll be back in just a moment. We have with us in studio, Luna Williams. She's the president of the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix. We'll take our first break, but we'll be right back. What is money laundering? Money laundering is the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving financial institutions or legitimate businesses. There are three steps in the process of money laundering. One, placement. This is the movement of illegitimately obtained cash from its source into circulation through financial institutions. Two, layering. This is the act of concealing the source of that money using a series of complex transactions and bookkeeping tricks. 3. Integration. This is the movement of previously laundered money into the economy, mainly through the financial institutions, and thus such monies appear to be normal business earnings. What is terrorist financing? Terrorist financing provides funds for terrorist activity. It may involve funds raised from legitimate sources such as donations, profits from businesses and charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as the drug trade, the smuggling of weapons, fraud, kidnapping and extortion. There is an interrelation between terrorist financing and proliferation financing, which is the act of providing funds or financial services used in the acquisition, manufacture, or transport of weapons of mass destruction. How does money laundering and terrorist financing affect St. Lucia? St. Lucia can lose its reputation and international credibility. More violent and organized crimes and corruption. Penalties for the financial sector and loss of correspondent banking. 
St. Lucia will be evaluated in 2019 with respect to its money laundering and terrorist financing regimes. How can you help? Get involved. Learn about the threat that money laundering and terrorist financing pose to St. Lucia. And cooperate with financial and non-financial institutions when information is requested. Money laundering and terrorist financing are crimes with penalties of up to $1 million and imprisonment of up to 10 years or both. A message brought to you by the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee and the Attorney General's Chambers. Thanks for staying with us. We continue with Issues and Answers and reminding you that we have in studio our guest, Ms. Luna William, President of the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix. Uh, Ms. William, before we go next to a more in-depth look at what you actually do over in St. Croix during the Lawrence Festival, you did mention the fact that you had a foreign minister and you know, an ambassador visiting during your last independence observation. That would have been the highlight of it, but was there anything else in particular that they did while they were up there during that time, or was it more specifically just to participate in your observance of St. Lucia's independence? They were there to participate, and we also had a town hall meeting where they spoke to the St. Lucians, especially Ambassador Fletcher. She's the ambassador for the diaspora, so she spoke in depth to the St. Lucians about the diaspora affairs what they do, what her office does. How useful was that in terms of um, getting that information to your members and how would, were they able to make use of that sort of information in terms of what follow-up they could have done in terms of um, strengthening the organization and being, even being more active? Yes, we have had people asking questions, more questions about our group and more questions about the diaspora um, in St. Croix. And so when they came, they really, especially, like I said, Dr. Dr. Fletcher, she really outlined what the diaspora is like, what is her job as the ambassador for the diaspora. And it was well received. We had uh, over 200 people at that gathering. And so they asked questions that she answered. So it was a really good session. Well, since we are on Dr. Fletcher and that aspect of it, it's probably a good time now for me to ask you, since she's in charge of diaspora affairs, your association, do you have that level of cooperation with other associations from other countries with similar objectives? Yes, we do. Um, her program manager, Janik, she's very instrumental in giving us all the information that we want. Everything that is happening with the diaspora right now and in government, we get. We get all that information. Okay. But do you, have, do you have collaborations with other countries that have similar associations like yours in terms of projects, um, maybe exchanges, coming together for meetings, looking at how you can strengthen your ties? Yes, we do. We have a convention every two years, the St. Lucia Overseas Associations. We meet every two years in a different place. Last year it was London. This year it's going to be in, sorry, next year it's going to be in Calgary. It was supposed to be on St. Croix, but because of the hurricane last year or the year before, we could not host it. So it went over to Calgary. So in 2022, we will be hosting it on St. Croix. Interesting. Well, recently we had the president here, Mr. Kadas. So it's quite interesting that you, how um, active does your organization, the Association of St. Croix, participate in the levels of the umbrella body? Okay, we have the biggest membership, so we do participate. We, part we participate at all the meetings. We give our feedback, you know, during, during those meetings. And um, especially the, for the diaspora affairs, before Dr. Fletcher, just used to be a whole bunch of talk about the diaspora, the diaspora, but since she was appointed, we have been seeing results. She is very instrumental in bringing all the associations together. So right now we have all the information that we need. Everything that is happening in St. Lucia, we know. Okay, interesting. Yes. So we had quite a gap 
but we're now going to get back at, at, at the La Rose Festival. Tell okay. us about that experience where um, your group shows St. Lucia's culture by way of putting on a semblance of a La Rose celebration. Yes, we're, we're actually getting ready for that right now. Um, I am the La Rose Queen. So when we do have our seances, we have a lot of the St. Lucians participating. And um, we usually do it the Sunday, the last Sunday of August. La Rose is celebrated August, sorry, not August. It's August? Yes, yes August. Yes, yes. August 30th. But since we're not in St. Lucia, we usually celebrate it the last Sunday of August. And we, last year, we had a mass, we went to church, and from church we had a procession from the church to where we kept the event. So we have all, everything like here, we have the queen, the king, the prince and the princess, the nurses, everything. So we try to do everything that St. Lucia has, we try, to, we try to portray that too. And um, we get questions like, what it's, what's the festival all about? And we do explain to them what the festival is about. I hope St. Lucian's in your group not um, putting on the pressure for asking why they, there's not a margarite as well. We have been asked the question why there's not a margarite. What has been your response? My response has been that for all these years, we've always celebrated La Rose. Nobody has ever come up with the idea to celebrate Margaret because it's the St. Lucia Association doing all those you know cultural events but nobody seemed to want to do the um, Margaret. Okay maybe those persons in this program might pressure you into to doing so if not this year but next year but and you still have a couple months to go so who knows it could well happen this year. Maybe. We just due to take our second break on the program but when we come back we will look at also the Juno Creole we know which must also be something big that you celebrate over in St. Croix and other matters that relate to your association of St. Croix. We'll be back with Miss Luna William. Hey, look at you breastfeeding. I give him birth just now, but I don't think I can breastfeed. Why won't you breastfeed? The thing is my breasts are so small. I don't think I will have enough milk for my baby. My dear, you can breastfeed. The size of your breast does not matter. The more the baby sucks on your breast, the more milk your breast will make. People say your breast will fall when you breastfeed. I don't want mine to fall. Eventually, all breasts will fall. Once you wear a supportive bra, it will help maintain the muscles of your breast while you breastfeed. Breast milk is very important for your baby's health. It is complete nutrition for your baby with the right nutrients. I did a lot of reading whilst I was pregnant and found out a lot of good things about breastfeeding. Really? Like what? You will lose the baby fat much easier when you breastfeed. The baby is more intelligent and the baby gets sick less. It is also cheaper and practical since you wouldn't have to buy artificial milk or boil bottles. Breastfeeding does all that? Eh eh. Now you make me want to breastfeed? I want my baby to be healthy and smart. There's more. In addition, I saved a lot of money from not having to buy formula. Do you know how expensive formula is? No formula? How is that possible? The baby will go hungry? No, the breast is adequate for the baby's need from birth to six months. The baby needs no other foods or liquids during that period. Is that so? My sister had a baby last year and my granny insisted she give the baby Toloma and she was only three months. Nothing before six months. The nutritionist will guide you on how to introduce foods to the baby. Wow, I learned a lot. I had no idea breastfeeding was that important. Yes, it is. Breastfeeding is the best thing you can do for your baby. Do it and you will see. You will also bond with your baby. I will, my girl. Nice talking to you. I'm happy to hear that. Also encourage your friends and family too. You're watching Issues and Answers. Reminding you with me, Luna William, the president of the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix. In St. Lucia, Junior Creole has really grown to be a big thing and I think certainly in St. Croix, the feeling is almost the same in terms of the observance, the way St. Lucians come out. Tell us about your experience in St. Croix around the time of Junior Creole. Junior Creole is very big on St. Croix too. It gets bigger every year. We have the foods, the local foods, just like here. 
We also have our exhibition booth, or Tikai, like we say. In that booth, we have the old time port, the, like we say, the vase. <laughs> we have the vase, and you know, all those long time things, the curtain with the bed, with the little bed behind it. So we have that as an exhibition booth. And we have all the local foods the tui tui, the aqua tui tui, the tablet, you know, and all those little things that we do in St. Lucia. We have most of the same foods on St. Croy too. And, and the dressing, which is a, a big part of it. Oh, India. yes. We dress in our national way because we are very patriotic. I, I think it, it means even more to us when we're away from St. Lucia. So that day you see everybody in their madras, in their the colors of the flag and it's really big but apart from st lucians are there other nationalities on st croy with a similar association that you know do things to reflect their own culture or is it st lucia that's prominent in terms of having an association overseas st lucia is prominent but they also have the dominica association but around that same time is the independent celebration and the creole festival so you find most of them go over to that and those who remain on St. Croix, they join with us, you know, with Junek we all. And um, there are a few Haitians also who participate, you know, they come around and they participate in the event. How diversified is the population on St. Croix in terms of various nationalities and what segment of it is St. Is Lucian? Does St. Lucian really have a high number compared to the other nationalities that are presently living on St. Croix? Yes, St. Lucia has one of the highest populations on St. Croix. Um, they also have a lot of people from Santo Domingo, um, Dominica too, but mostly St. Lucians. A lot of people from Mikut side, Denry side, Sufre side, yes. And they keep constant check with the families back in St. Lucia because we you know the traditional things like barriers, remittances, and stuff like that. It is something that is very common as well amongst your group? Yes, it is. And um, one of the things that I can say about St. Lucians living on St. Croix, when there's a death in your family, they're all there for you. Whether they know the person or not, as long as it's a St. Lucian, they're there. Everybody donates food, whatever it is, like the day of the repast. Sometimes the family may not have to do anything. Everybody brings something for the repast. So that's one of, one of the things that the other islands admire about us, the St. Lucians. Okay, you're in, the, in numbers. Yes. Just before we go, though, you did mention some of the main areas. We looked at Independence, we looked at Laos, we looked at Juni Creole, and you also did, said that there were some other social activities that you engaged in. You mentioned a bit, but I'm sure that there are others that you would like to mention before we leave. Yes, um, one of the things that the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix does we donate to, there's a home for the age, so we make a monthly contribution. The members at our monthly meetings, we donate whatever we have and the association matches it and we give it to the home. During Christmas time, we go there caroling. We also take part in St. Croix cultural events that we dance quadrille different places. There is a group called I I Dancers. We combine with them sometimes. Like the independent celebration this year, they danced with us. And sometimes when they have an occasion, we dance with them also. So we have that exchange with the I I Dancers. Okay, so if a St. Lucian is planning to visit St. Croix and they like to get in contact with your group, what would be the, the best and easiest way to make that sort of contact when they arrive in St. Croix? When they arrive in St. Croix, they just ask anybody about the St. Lucia Association and they can get in touch with me. I provide my number and they get in touch with me. Okay, any final closing comments, uh, Ms. William, as, as we just about to wrap up on the program today? Yes, I would like to thank you for having me and also Ambassador Fletcher. I cannot stop thanking her because she has been very instrumental in bringing us all together. Before it used to be a lot of talk about the diaspora, talk, 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 but she's, she has been appointed and she is working really hard to get us all together. Um, I also want to say that there's also another St. Lucia group on St. Croix. When the ambassador came 
in February, we joined together. And um, in, I mentioned also in 2022, the convention is going to be on St. Croix. The two groups will be working together for the convention. Lovely. Well, Ms. Luna William, it was certainly a pleasure having you with us to speak about the activities of St. Lucian's over in St. Croix and the events that your group really participated in and the fact that there are actually two groups and that you're keeping the name, the flavor, the culture of St. Lucia very much alive in St. Croix. Thank you. I also want to pick up a member of the other association. Her name is Chris Centros. It's a birthday today. Happy birthday, Mrs. Centros. Mm. Thank you. Well, this has been Issues and Answers. I'd like to thank Ms. Luna William, the president of the St. Lucia Association of St. Croix. You can join us when we have another edition of Issues and Answers. <laughs>